Boy, God love this legend. You can't get up for this game. You don't need to be here. You know, I try to go out there and provide tough yards for my team. I'm not a flashy guy, so you're not going to get 30 carries and 220 yards. <laughs> you're going to get 30 carries, 150, 100, because uh, that's what I do. They asked for me. They wanted me. So well, they got me. Durability has, has really been my staple. You know, in between the tackles, I don't think there's many guys that do it better. Sixty minutes, baby. Oh, sixty minutes. Oh my goodness. Oh, ain't no doubt about it. It's a long. It's gonna be a long day for some boys today, coach. Before the game, I don't get too tight and too tense. Right until you know it's time to go out there on the field. Woo! What a day. Great day to work, baby. Time to go to work. Time to make the donuts. <laughs> Time to make the donuts. Time to make the donuts. I got it from a commercial, uh, the uh, a Dunkin' Donuts commercial, uh -huh. where the guy woke up and he said, time to make the donuts. Time and hey, work, it's time to go to work. It's time to make the donuts. Somebody got to make the donuts. Oh my goodness. Wow, that was close. Wow, that was close, baby. Oh my goodness. I love the game. I love playing the game, and I have a great amount of fun playing the game. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo! Woo! That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. It got me cranking up now. It cranking me up. It throws people off because they're like, man, you having fun out here. When I'm out there, you know, I feel good. I feel I'm, I'm happy about it. And when I break off a big play, I'm laughing. I'm I'm letting them know that hey, you know, this is starting to look easy. Oh my goodness, that's gonna be a long day. I think somebody trying to pull my clothes down. What you think? Yeah. They trying to pull my clothes down out there. That's the only way they're gonna stop me. Smile too much. This off, man. It's irritating the mess out of me, man. You know what I'm saying? You know what, you know what they say? You, know, you grew up in Canada, you don't know what they say. They say when you look good, you, you feel good. You, no, you feel good. And when you feel good, you play good. See, and I'm, I look good. You look good? You feel good? I feel good. Let's go play good. Cool. That's what I'm talking about. People don't really expect you to go out there and have fun uh, when you're running the football and people pounding on you, but it's, they're not really pounding on me. I'm pounding on them. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 baby. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. There's no doubt in my mind that they can't tackle me, and, and, and you know, I, I always repeat that because I believe it. No doubt. I get a shake in my head. I'm like, whoo, no way. There's no doubt in my mind I'm going to break a big play. They give us to the bus. He breaks the tackle. He's at the 5 4 3 2 1. Touchdown. Game over. Jerome Bettis from 10 yards out. The Steelers and the bus are victorious in overtime. You can be as tough as the next guy, but yet when you get out the field, you can have a smile and you can be a normal guy like everybody else. I think that's what I really enjoy about it. I can turn it on and turn it off. Looking good, feeling yeah. good. I'm about to play good. <laughs> hey, they teach you something over there in Canada, huh? <laughs> the uh, Los Angeles Rams select Jerome Bettis, running back, Notre Dame. Coming out of college, I was a fullback. I go out in training camp, the two tailbacks get hurt. Bang, bang, so they're gone. So now I was thrust with a new challenge because they moved me to tailback. At that point, there was no 250-pound running backs. 
when I came out, there was none. So I didn't have a barometer to look at to say, OK, he reminds me of this guy. So they were looking at me like, you know, can this guy last? Dennis is going to get a handoff up the middle. Jerome breaks a tackle at the 25 20. He could go all the way. Jerome Bettis, the rookie out of Notre Dame, like lightning into the end zone. Pitch back to Bettis, turns it right. Bettis cuts up to the 30, Bettis to the 35, on his feet at the 40, 45, 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 30, down to the 20, down to the 15, 10, 5, touchdown for Jerome Bettis. 71 yards, his longest. My first year, I was having a great time because everything had happened so quick, right out of college, so I was having a ball. I go crazy, I go wild. I want everybody to know, this is my house, my house, my house. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what you call a touchdown. I'm not worried about that sophomore jinx. I don't believe in that stuff. I'm not superstitious. My second year's gonna be better than the first. <gasps> Last year, I went for over 1,400 yards. No one's gonna stop me this year. My second year, things got a little bit rough in terms of me being able to run the ball and, and me being utilized to my ability, and then the third year was terrible. There was some difference in opinions, and they said I was lazy, they said I wasn't a hard worker, they said I wasn't a hard runner. They said that, uh, you know, I was uh, detrimental to the team. I didn't play hurt. And anybody that knew me could tell you that uh, all those things were just flat uh, lies. We're going to open it up all day. Uh, no doubt. The night before, uh, I was watching Charles Barkley. He had 33 rebounds when he pay, played his former team, the Suns. And that moment, it really swept me because I realized that, hey, these guys, you know, they didn't want me last year. You know, I was going to go out there and, uh, and try to put a hurting on those guys. They said I was done, over with, finished. Yeah. Wait till they get a load of me. The give to the bus. And the bus walks into the end zone for that Steeler touchdown against his former teammate. I think the most satisfying moment for me was uh, the long run that I had, and it signified a couple things. Uh, when I was uh, released uh, by the Rams and traded, there was a comment made that I wasn't a game breaker, that uh, they wanted a, a, a player who in an instant could change the game, and uh, I felt that I could do that. And so when I had the long run and I made a guy miss and ran away from some guys in the secondary, I felt that you know I changed the complexion of a game in one play and I had done the things that they said that I couldn't do. And so I think that one play pretty much uh, made all the wrong things right. Oh. I'm ready to shake round and roll, baby. They're trying to keep me cooped up. That's what it is. I know what they're trying to do. You know, don't close me for the day, are you? No, I may. No, no. I only need about 30, 40 more for the thousand. You see the score in the game? Yeah. And you know what we need your ass for? Come on now, let's get back on the field. Last play. 
Damn, is he becoming a pain in the ass. I'm gonna get back on the phone. Is your dad here today? Yeah. You tell him I need to talk to him after this game. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going right to your mom. I'm talking to your mom and dad afterwards. I'm, all right, I'm, I'm gonna tell him, here. I'm gonna tell Mr. and Mrs. Best I need to see him. <laughs> This is like a parent, parent teacher conference. <laughs> you ever have a parent teacher conference? I think the biggest lesson that I learned was that I couldn't quit. Things are not going to always be great, and that you have to just pick your head up and give it another try. I know it's meant a lot to you, too. It did. It did. I'm glad. It did. I'm glad we did it the way we did it. Oh, man. <laughs> Being a class guy, you are. That's what you are. I always tell Coach Kyle that, hey, I'm consistent. I'll be there for you every weekend. You know what? We're going to keep your ass here for a while, too. Hey, I got to. You got to keep me. I want to retire here, Coach. I want you to retire. Yeah. Because you know what? This is your city. Oh, man, no doubt. And you know what? You're my guy. <laughs> I know I'm going to be here for a while longer, too, so. I think the fans here are incredible. I mean, they're behind you 100%, and I think the players, they really vibe off of that. Go bus! Bus, 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 bus! The bus is going to roll. The bus. Come on, ride this bus. You can ride it. Get your bus pass. We're going for a ride today, baby. is cranked up and in gear. Can't stop the bus, baby. Can't stop the bus. Play action fake rolling right. Here's Cordell being chased. Throwback screen. Here comes the bus. 25-20, 15-10. Bus rambling to the five. Bus goes down and dies for the end zone. And there's a, an avenue for the bus. And the bus says, I'll take that avenue. It's easy street. The bus just down the road, baby. And the game is on the counter to the bus. He goes on. What tackle charges to the five four three two one? The bus was driving hard. I came to him full throttle. He did like this. Here comes the bus. Boop. He said, "What? Here comes the bus." He both. Boop, boop. Told you the bus was gonna roll, baby. We rolled it. We rolled it. Back to the bus, he's gonna throw it, down for the goal line, and we've got a touchdown for the Steelers! On the money. Hey, that's right. you cut that ball, too. I can do whatever we gotta do to score. Right in stride, huh? Hit him right in right stride. stride. And they fake, no, they give it to the bus, he throws a touchdown pass! You know, I told Ben, you know, I saw what he saw, you know. I found a way to get it to him. <laughs> Grew up uh, in inner city, Detroit. They called me Baby Huey growing up because uh, I was always a little too big. I got a chance to play with the older boys, but uh, emotionally, I wasn't stable enough, so uh, I cried a few times, so uh, the baby Huey name stuck with me. Now when I go, go out there on the field, most of the other guys are crying now. Pick on me! Pick on me! Pick on me! Pick on me! Want somebody to pick on, pick on me! Believe it or not, my favorite team was the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> I hated the Steelers with a passion because they always found a way to beat my beloved Cowboys, and, and it, was, uh, it was always frustrating. I played flag football uh, growing up in middle school, but I never really played uh, Pop Warner, uh, Pal, any kind of uh, organized um, outside of school. Actually, growing up, my passion was totally bowling. I wanted to be a pro bowler. 
think I was about seven years old and my mom, she got us all together and said that uh, we were gonna start bowling. And she just tell me, just, baby, just go ahead and throw it down the lanes. And I used to uh, push it down the lanes. My mom just felt that it was a way for, for us to, to do something as a family together and to keep me off of the street so uh, I wouldn't grow up to be a bad kid or anything like that. And the minute that I, I felt that I could be good at it, I started to really love it and I picked up on it and uh, it's been no looking back ever since. When I was introduced to football, I really didn't like it because I was so much of a bowler by then, I didn't want to quit uh, bowling, but I had to because football practice was on the weekends. <laughs> It's always a serious deal when I get out on the lanes and lace the shoes up and, and get that ball going. It's something that's uh, special to me because it's one of the few times that I can compete against myself. My best game, I bowled a uh, 300 uh, game, a perfect game, and I think that's probably my biggest achievement sports-wise today, bowling a perfect game. Good to see you, man. I'm happy you're out here, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Hey. I need to get bowling with you one time. Okay. Are you, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll see if you're ready. When I get out there and get in front of those uh, cornerbacks and those uh, little safeties, I think I can call myself a bowling ball in because uh, I sure want to run those little guys over. <laughs> Come on. And a bus leaves clean boards all over his spine. The bus shakes him off like fly. Was trying to tackle me while I was bowling. I think it'd probably be the greatest sport ever invented. For you to have to roll a strike while somebody's hanging on your shoulders or hanging on your back, I think that would probably be the hardest thing that anybody would ever have to do because it's hard enough to throw the ball down and try to get a strike anyway. Ah. 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 Close. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Jerome better, Jerome better see you. Surely the real thing, he ain't no head of lettuce. Yoy, Jerome better. <laughs> Ball. That's what I'm talking about. Kind of like this game. Cool. Plus, baby. We in your house. This is your spot. <laughs> What was the dream? What got you here? Actually, it's kind of funny because my dream wasn't wasn't all of this. I mean, right. coming from the inner city of Detroit, um, my my dream was to go to college. I knew that there weren't weren't going to be opportunity for me right. financially to get to school. So that's why in the ninth grade, I I, I decided to play football. You that know, was your motivation. that was my motivation to get to college. <laughs> There's only one way you get respect, and that's by looking somebody in the eye for 60 minutes. Go out there, hitch up your trousers, and say, hey, baby, here I am now. You know what he would do? He would say, son, you're a great individual. You're a great person. But, son, you just can't play here. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> when you got to college, what, at what point did you see this in your mind? What happened was my sophomore year, I got a chance to see the, the caliber of, of players. And they, right. they, they're like, oh, you playing against the best of the best. And I'm saying to myself, this is my first year playing, and I'm ripping up the best of the best? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I changed my mindset as opposed to me saying, I just want to make it, to saying, well, now I want to dominate. As an offensive guy, I'm not supposed to be attacking defensive guys. I'm supposed to be getting a yard. But I always say uh, to guys, it's no fun when the rabbit get the gun. Because I ask them, them who's hunting who? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm hunting you. They asked me. They wanted me. When they got me. What was your absolute favorite moment in your whole football career? Just well, your favorite for, moment? for me, my favorite moment, um, we were playing Jacksonville Jaguars. It was a, a Monday night game. I fumbled the football with about four minutes to go in the game. He goes nowhere. The ball's on the turf. The Jaguars have it. The bus fumbled. May score 
uh, touchdown, tie the game. Rolling out, dumps it, Mitchell, touchdown, Jacksonville! We go into overtime. I get about a 25-yard uh, shovel pass that I, I make about three or four guys miss, and I break to the end zone. Shovel pass, forward, the Steelers have it, Bucs goes all the way, game over! This crowd is going for circuit, did you see the bus take the shovel and run over? Just that play symbolized to me that, you know, chips were down and I made that mistake. I didn't let it affect me, my mind. Tell me about, um, you know, the other things you're doing other than football, like your life outside of football and how you're expanding your horizons. For the longest time, I was a football player. The last couple of years, understanding that football is not the end of my life, it's the beginning of my life. Right. I still have a life after football. Focus, attitude. good attitude, and a great work ethic, okay? It makes me feel good that uh, I can give back whenever I can because uh, I come from a, a less fortunate background and I understand what it means uh, to get an opportunity. We had a uh, cyber bus program that uh, enabled kids uh, from the inner city of Pittsburgh to go and to actually learn computer literacy at Carnegie Mellon. It's because it's 0.06. That's 0.4. Right here. Bang. There we go. There we go. Oh, uh, we rocking now. Good job, good job, good job. There you go. What I get out of it is the smiles of the kids. You know, I get an opportunity to help kids and affect them. There we go, there we go. And that's what I want to do. I want them to see me in a different light and know that I'm not just a football player, that I am a person I do care about. Let's go to work, baby. You know what I'm saying? Follow your lead, all right? That's what it's all about. Let's do this. Let's get this damn record out of the way, then we'll go for the next milestone. That's right. Let's get all right, it started. Let's go. All day long, baby. Persistence. This game, things are done by team. No one has exemplified it. this team more than a running back who today personally reached a, a milestone. And you know what? The one thing I've always said, this guy will never, he understands this game, what it's about, the offensive line and team. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot to be said for that. And that's the kind of leadership we had throughout this football team. Man. Congratulations to you, man. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier.